I guess I need to buy some supplies. I can't live off cafeteria food and eat now eat now for my entire stay here. So what was the previous dialogue before that? For the time I leave the main sunset to the majority of that assembly. Yes, 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 yes. As I leave for the gate, I'll make a few loud stretches to try and stave off the tiredness that's uh, accumulated over the week. Oh, it's Lily! You know what? Her cane actually kind of looked like a sword there for a second to me. I don't know why. After passing through and round the corner, though, I see a solitary figure walking downhill towards the small town below with the color of her hair and tapping over a cane are unmistakable. It's really, well, it is, isn't it? It's the countryside. It has a very countryside feel to it. Because it is the countryside. <laughs> you know, I live in the countryside pretty much as well. And hills and stuff like that, you know, with scenery like that, aren't really particularly uncommon. In fact, they're very common. I quickly walk up to her, which seems to catch her attention without a word needing to be said. Hi, right, Lily. She takes a moment to place the voice, slightly adjusting her head to face a bit more towards the source of my voice as she does. You know, in Emmy's route, we didn't even see Lily past the scene where she had to stare off with Shizune kind of thing. And, like, this time around, he kind of pissed her off a bit, and now we're seeing her again, but she's probably forgotten all about it. Sal? Yep, that's me. She seems to have a good memory for voices. The fact that she actually remembered is a pleasant surprise. Good evening, what brings you here? Once again, she gives a small polite bow, and once again I reply in kind before realizing that I needn't do so. Uh, just going in town, are you? My, my, what a coincidence. They're doing the same thing, eh? Hmm, I usually go shopping on Fridays. She paused for a moment, suddenly looking a little lost. That said, Hanako usually comes into town with me. Ah, not lost, but worried. The two do seem to keep pretty close tabs on one another. It's kind of surprising that Hanako would just forget Lily like that. I noticed her reading in the library. She probably just caught up in the book. She lets out a small sigh of relief. Thank you, she has a habit of doing that. Habit reader? Right, she doesn't like being around crowds of people, so reading away from everyone lets her relax a bit. Well, she probably didn't intend it, so I can't help but grimace I recall, as I recall my first meeting with her. Hardly one to bring it up, I remain silent as we quietly continue to walk down the quiet road. Tack, 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 tack. With the road to be a rift of cars and the students of Yamaku increasingly far behind us, the quiet rustling of the leaves and the measured tapping of Lily's cane against the sidewalk are all that can be heard. It's kind of nice, especially compared to the hustle and bustle of where I used to live. Before I know it, I've relaxed so much that a loud yawn escapes before I can control it. Tired? Yeah, I've been running ragged these past few days. That's an understatement to be sure. Transferring into a different school would be bad enough, but nothing like this. Well, hopefully everything should settle down for you. The festival has got everyone in a spin right now, and you've been plopped right in the middle of things. For a moment I hesitate, but given her apparent tolerance for frankness, I decide to give my full thoughts. Uh, yes, the marker is kind of different, though. I mean, the formality surrounding everything, the isolation around it, not to mention the most obvious difference. It's got kind of a whole different mindset. I suppose I'll get used to it though in time. She gives a matter of fact nod, apparently pleased with my answer. It feels almost as if she included me in the flock of students she's shepherding, along with class 3 2 and I'm not Well, not that I mind, it's nice to get the thoughts off my chest in any case. Looking on the bright side, one could see it as a chance for a new beginning. You should cherish the ability to make new friends. That's optimistic. Nonetheless, it's good to have a positive attitude about such things, I suppose. Uh, I guess that's a good take on it. Walking on down the road, she seems to somewhat become somewhat unsettled. Before I can ask what's on her mind, she seems to collect herself and speaks up about something else. So, where in town where are you going? That's actually a pretty good question. I'd come in to buy food, but the layout of the place is still totally foreign to me. I'd intend to just wander around and see what I could find, but with sunset already approaching and nightfall not too far away, that doesn't seem very wise. I'm going to have to ask her for directions again. I was just going to get some food, but now that you mention it, I don't really know the way. Well now, this is quite lucky. I was just about to go to the convenience store myself. 
Looks like I'll be in your care again then, thanks. Together we walk to the store. My pace is carefully slowed to remain beside her. Compared to my usual walking pace, hers is quite a little, quite a bit slower. Not that it's without reason. After what could have been more than several minutes, I catch sight of our objective. This town really is pretty small. Without further ado, we make our way inside with a greeting from the counter. Then if I tag along with you, usually a Hanukkah would help me, but seeing as she's not here, it takes a moment before I realize what she means. Considering she wouldn't be able to read any labels, shopping without any help would be a big pain for her. That said, I can't shake the feeling that she'd had this idea since I said I was coming again. Yeah, she must have, otherwise she would have just stood there waiting, wouldn't she? Sure, it'd be my pleasure. I grabbed two well-used red baskets from the small stack beside the entrance, handing one to Lily. She lays it on the ground, putting her school bag in, retracing her cane and sliding it through the basket's handles before picking it back up in her right hand. Wait, if she doesn't use her cane... Before I can complete the fort, she comes beside me and pinches the cuff of my uniform in her slender fingers. Is this alright? Uh, sure. I have no reason not to accept. I can think of worse things than shopping with a pretty girl holding on to me, even if it is unnecessary. Unnecessary. We never get our way through the store with not one of the occasional passing customers seeming to bat an eye. Considering how close your macro is, I guess seeing students from there must be entirely normal for the local residents. As we reach each aisle, I quickly check with Lily and find out what she needs. I grabbed along with what I'm looking for and put our items into their respective baskets. I guess this is the same routine she and Hanukkah follow every Friday. Right, all that's left is the bread and that should be my shopping done. You need anything else, Lily? No, this should be everything. Off we go then. With a quick sidestep to the bakery section, we make our way to the registers. The line, thankfully, is almost non-existent. It's not long before we both paid for our food and are out the door. That's the weird thing, isn't it? Like, in places like this, you know, you don't really tend to see long queues of people in line. But when you go into towns or cities or anything like that, well, this is a town, but it's a small town. Probably much smaller than the nearest town to where I live. And, like, you don't really get long lines in places like that. But in, like, cities and all that, you get, like, really long leg. <laughs> uh, queues, not legs. Well, there would be a lot of legs, but you get the idea. Uh, it's not long before we both paid for the, our food and are out the door. As Lily retrieves her cane and extends it to full length, I waste a moment looking upwards at the night sky while holding both our bags. For a moment I try to make clouds with my breath, but the summer heat doesn't seem to cooperate. Eventually she writes herself, taking a quick stretch before taking her bag and leaving me to my two. You tired as well? The festival preparations have been complete chaos. Just only breathing down my neck doesn't exactly help things either. Hey, she's only trying to get everything organized right? better now than later, right? I suppose I'm going to enjoy relaxing in town tomorrow, that's for certain. I guess the festival preparations must be taking their toll on both of them. We walk out into the quiet street, ticking between ourselves as we're talking, I mean, as we carry our bags off of food and supplies in the store. Wait, what's that? I know it's a very distinctive figure making its way towards us, silhouetted by the street lamps. It couldn't be. It is. For a second, I think it's another male student from my class. As he, or should I say, she, gets closer, I recognize her quickly. Who oh, could that possibly be? Actually, how would that? Bloody hell. Hour 44 minutes? But I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna put a cliffhanger there. But it's pretty obvious who this is gonna be with that description. Rin! Rin? What are you doing out here so late? Rin? Lily perks her head, looking like she's trying to focus on listening more keenly. It suddenly comes to me that I should probably inter interpret the scene for her. It's Rin uh, Tezuka, I think was her last name from our school. She stiffens at the name and gives a complicated looking expression. Something like a forced fusion of a composed smile and a painful cringe. Ah, I understand. I guess Lily knows Rin too. <laughs> She's like, you mean her? The person who has that odd way of speaking? 
Rin turns to look at us, looking terribly out of it. I'm not entirely sure if she recognizes all of us. At least she doesn't acknowledge it if she does. She looks like a zombie, or a statue, or a statue of a zombie. But slowly, some symptoms of understanding seem to light in her dark eyes. This is something she must react to. Rin blinks once very early. Hello. There is an awkward pause, everyone waiting for someone else to say something. Uh, what are you doing here this late? Hi. I was wondering about that myself too just now. Some people asked that just before. I assumed they were wondering the same. I didn't know. They didn't know either. I asked. That's why I'm wondering. So that was pretty much it. It's a bit of mystery out of murder. Do we go in that way? She turns facing to her right in order to demonstrate the direction the other people went to as if that was important, then rotates back like a mechanical puppet in one of those overly complicated clockworks. The person who gives an impression of being the quiet type, Rin really does use a lot of work to say things that don't need a lot to be said. Surprisingly, I can be the same. I can, like, I'll just, like, try to say something simple and then I'd ramble on, kind of like she's doing. Unsure if she's finished, I say nothing, and I'll just Lily, who seems equally robbed of words for the time being. I think that both of us are in fact just scared that any response might provoke her to continue. A uh, stupefied lack of reaction doesn't phase Rin at all. She keeps looking at us expectantly, a calm hint of expression on her blank face. She seems to be that kind of person, always so relaxed. As if blue elephant grey sedatives were flowing in her veins in a place of blood. Do you have amnesia, right? Don't recall you having anything of the sort, though. No, I don't think it's that. The elder passerby were probably just worried, though. You do look really lost the way you're standing in the middle of the street. Oh, I see. Maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, should have taken some other kind of pose in that situation. In that case, I mean, same thing. I wonder for a while whether I should choose this angle filler or give up for the sake of my own sanity. I decide on a left. Since that most of the time it's better to not read too deeply into what Rin is babbling about. Talking with Rin is like playing chess with a supercomputer who does seemingly completely random moves as if to mock everything you know about chess. It's like that except with human interaction. And even if I win, it feels like losing. Damn, it's just like Kenji said, even when I win I lose. Is this the power of the girls of Yamaku? Now that's the power of girls in general, <laughs> stereotypically speaking, isn't it? It's like, you can never win an argument with a woman, no matter what you do. Heck, maybe even if you are a woman yourself, it'll just kind of be a stalemate, it'll be a draw at best. I wish to fall aside as, to da as too dangerous to consider for her. Probably just Kenji's anti-female propaganda getting to me during a moment of weakness. Yeah, maybe taking an all pose might have worked. So anyway, you have no idea what you're doing here. She frowns, looking extremely displeased at either my question, its consequences, or the answer she's about to give. I do have some idea, but I can't really tell what kind of an idea. That sounds like progress, at least. At least sounds as if she's spotted an opening for some kind of reasonably normal conversation. I can't say I share optimism. Yes, there is some. Definitely, the rest will come later. I'm sure of it. I always have reasons. The ensuing silence kills Lily's hopes all too visibly. That didn't last long. Rin's, as far as I can tell, unbased assurance aside, what should be done. We could just leave her to her own devices, whatever those are, but it's late and I don't think we'll be getting any thanks if Rin is found standing here in the middle of the night. Which she probably will, unless she manages to remember all what she was doing here in the first place. As for me, trying to guess what might have been going on in her mind when she decided to embark on this adventure, the chances seem to be on par with winning the war. Several times in a row. Lily is oddly quiet too. I'd appreciate some support from the sidelines here, especially if she's more familiar with Rin than I am. I wonder how much more familiar she is, though. But it can be helped, it seems her familiarity with Rin is exactly why she's staying subdued. So, I assume you were going somewhere, not coming back to the school. Any idea where? Her eyes widen in shock and she jolts back in a somewhat artificial way, making it seem like an act rehearsed for situations like this. Are you a mind reader? Is that your disability? How unique! No, what? Why would you think that? You know what I was doing? <laughs> that face! Hey, it was just an educated guess. We walked the same street in the other direction just before to go to the store. If you were going to school, we would have met you on the way. Oh. She looks a little disappointed. 
Like Kenji, Rin appears, quick to jump to completely rational conclusions. Maybe it's something in the water here. I make a mental note to stock up on soft drinks. You know, that is the second time this week that someone asked if I was a mind reader. Do I really give off that impression? Rin shrugs her shoulders, which is all the answer I get. You know, maybe you should come with us back to the school. Lily interjects just as I'm about to throw her debunk my alleged mind reading capabilities. She sounds rather concerned, a paper thin smile on her face badly disguising that fact. Maybe she came to the same conclusion as I did. Reverend Snake, I decided to let the mind reading topic drop as it's entirely inane anyway. Yeah, Lily's right, if you can't remember it, there's no point staying here. Ren considers this raw simple deduction for a moment then nods. Okay. We start to waltz to school again, having wasted a more time than necessary with this episode. Are those... Those kakadas, I think they're called. And you know what, with this kind of scenery and that in the background, Higurashi, man. Higurashi. <laughs> and we just coming to something in the water or something, man. Just like, yeah, Higurashi, but this is not Higurashi. It's nothing like Higurashi whatsoever. It just has a similar kind of, you know, small countryside kind of setting going on. You start towards the school again, having wasted any more, uh, having wasted any more time than necessary with this episode. Rin walks along the edge of the sidewalk in her rhythmic way, looking like a mix of a slate walker and rope dancer, while Lily see, keeps one hand on my shoulder, tapping out the ground with her teeth. Tap, step, step, tap, tap, step, step, step. Apart from that and a few fragmented beginnings of conversation, it's quiet. A quiet, uh, a quiet, quite apart from the relaxing on into town at that. So, how is the mural going? We're going to get bad luck. Never talk about work in progress. I'm sure it'll be wonderful. Bad luck. Tap, step, step, wait, no, tap, step, tap, step, she doesn't care to talk about it, Lily's politeness feels out of place for the first time, step, step, step. The hill Yamaku rests on top of is surprisingly steep, going uphill, we slow the pace, but I still feel my pulse rising and breathing getting heavier. Almost there, I can see the gates already. More than that, though, I notice that Lily's hand slightly tightens on my shoulder, inter interpreting it as a gesture that she wants to ask something I speak up. Anything wrong, Lily? I resist the urge to say, aside from our traveling companion, but only just. For a moment she seems to debate well she should even bring it up, but goes for it anyway. Is everything alright? Alright? How do you mean? The fact I can't interpret her incredibly vague question puts her off for a second. It's just, you seem unusually tired, I guess. Now that she brings it up, I notice that my breathing is strangely heavy. The uphill walk has really done a job on me. Lily noticed it all too quickly. What should we answer? Let's see. Walk through. Yep, sorry, I'm not in very good condition. It's alright, I just need to catch my breath. My condition isn't the best these days. Oh. Is it something that is related to you being transferred here? I mean... She cuts herself off rather abruptly, maybe realizing she was being a bit intrusive. Her instincts are sharp though, and while I don't like the subject, it's not like I should lie about it. But it's a little I don't think I'm out of it. I'm just a little weak for the time being. Naoko said you look fairly healthy, so I naturally thought... Lily doesn't finish her sentence again, letting it trail off with a measure of concern. As she furrows her brow, Lily's uncomfortable expression spurs me to say at least something to ease her feelings. It's surprising she's this flustered, considering her straightforward attitude with her own blindness. She must know that she's not all... Nah, that's... Not all share her own comfort about such things. I know it's okay. I have a pretty, uh, I guess the best word to put it would be messed up heart. Uh, rhythmia. Oh, uh, whatever the pronunciation. I had a bad heart attack a while ago because of it, and spent most of the spring in the hospital. Ended in Yamakuan do ah, doctor's orders. She suddenly nods her head in acknowledgement. My answer only seems to make Lily for her brow even further. Doesn't seem to quite know how to react, given we don't really know each other that well. I can't really fault her for it, given I have the exact same reaction. But I do want to, uh, uh as her concern, I really don't want to dwell on this island. Uh, don't worry about it. 
I tried to offer a reassuring smile, but then I realized the futility. That knowing this, Lily smiles at me reassuringly, but doesn't she say anything for her? Arriving at the dorm, Zarin stops in front of a mirror as if lightning struck her. She had been so quiet for almost all the walk back that I had all but forgotten she was here. It's Friday, isn't it? Yes, Friday, the 8th of June. This is bad. Bad? Why? I think I'm going to go in a field position for a possibly reverse order. Is something wrong? No, nothing is wrong. It's Friday and nothing's wrong yet. It's Merle. It's going to need to be finished by Sunday. So everything's alright. Do you have any drugs or a time machine? This is not good. Not good. So she's behind her schedule recording. She's in a exhibition at Rin's Carefree attitude several days ago. I don't know what to think. She has left herself open for a told you so, unless she can pull off whatever she needs to pull off by Sunday morning. Rin keeps staring at her Merle, looking as mortified as she can. Leave me, Annie. I'm going to need to work for a while. I glance at Lily, expecting her to an uh, incredulous look with me as I roll my eyes, but then I realize she is not one to do that kind of thing. Leave me. We do, of course, not one to aggravate her any more than she already is. There is a churning bad feeling in my gut. Rin sure has a knack of making people feel worried about her. She seems like a person who should never be left alone. Maybe we should call someone. She sounded like she was going into shock or something. I'm sure she will be just fine. She's just, uh, uh, how to say? Lily cocks her head a little, trying to find a polite way of calling Rin crazy without calling her crazy. Unique? Yes, a very unique person. I guess I could say that. She giggles at the notion, relentlessly nodding in agreement. Sorry about leaving you stranded as you talk to her. I don't really understand her, so I keep my distance. So my guess was right. Lily offers a slight apologetic smile as if she was sorry that her own shortcomings had prevented her from becoming close to Rin. I'm not one to blame her at all. Lily lets slip a long breath, probably the skies yawn. I imagine she's as exhausted by all this as I am. I'd better leave now and give these to Hanako. Thank you for the company, Asao. She smiles very sweetly at me. It feels different than normal, despite the fact that she seems to be smiling so often. I can't put my finger on what the difference is. It's just different. Relaxed, I'd say, but that's probably just relief over again rid of Rin, maybe. Uh, yeah, good night. Say hi to Hanako for me. I will. Good night. The students roll into class for all the Saturday morning session, each and every one of them sporting the tired eyes of people that have worked for the night. If only a day left to prepare, I suppose it's not so surprising. Thankfully, we don't have to sit for class until the lunch break, and then our time is our time. Uh, is our. No, well, that's something. You know, lurching in the class and the tired tiger, I suppose students aren't the only people here that enjoy their late Friday nights. Without saying a word, he scrolls some paper page, I mean, and question numbers on the board and slumps down at his desk. It's a completely atypical behavior for him, but it appears that no one in the class is going to call him out. What is weird students shuffle their textbooks and put them to work? I to wait, that's fine, I do the same. Fatigue has made the class antisocial, not a peep is heard among the ruffling papers. That can partly be attributed to the two empty seats beside me. For some reason, Misha and Suzuli aren't present, properly doing council work for the festival. It's very quiet without Misha present. I wonder if she was born as rowdy as she is, or if she is making up for Suzuli's lack of voice. Akai, can I speak to you for a moment? Yes, maybe. But that'll be next time, because I've been recording probably over two hours by this point. Points? Points. Whatever. So I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time. You know, I'd like to take a moment to uh, point out that it was just under two hours. <laughs> like, literally, just like, well, maybe it's two hours at this point now, but it was going up in seconds there. Whatever, I'm rambling again. So I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.